Hey guys, Mr. Bookie here, back with another video. So for today's content, it's going to be pretty interesting. It has nothing to do with unit analysis or in-game mechanics. As you guys have seen from the thumbnail, it is strictly based on relic probability. Right? And I was really curious because uh, I'm pretty sure most players, uh, even free to place by now, would have reached Trailblazer level 65. And they are pretty much spending their Trailblazer power on relics, right? Just farming all the Cavern of Corrosion, farming all the World 7, Simitar Universe, all these kind of stuff. So I was really curious, what are the odds of players such as us getting the desired main stats and subsets they require, right? So thanks to the help of our very, very smart CM bros, uh, they have compiled over 10,000 different relic rows to give us a rough probability on what kind of main stats and substats are distributed across the relics, right? So without further ado, let's get into today's content. So for today's content, we will be featuring the likelihood of obtaining three gold relics, as well as the probability of obtaining each main stat and subset, right? This letter is gonna be way more in-depth. So for all the data that I've managed to compile and summarize and translate so far, they are essentially provided by the player base in the CN community with a total submission of more than 10,000 different relics as of July 15th, 2023, right? And some of the main stats, it is updated up to 21st of July as well, right? Uh, they are not official numbers, so they are purely a community-driven data point, right? So the accuracy will definitely increase as more and more data points from the relics are gathered. But at the end of the day, one's relic experience is ultimately in the fate of RNG, right? No matter what the probability is, maybe the probability of getting a crit rate is at 1%, 10%, 90%, right? It doesn't really matter because it ultimately is RNG. So this entire video just goes to show roughly uh, what are the odds of you guys actually getting those main stats and subsets, right? So let's go on to the first thing, which is the likelihood of obtaining three gold relics. So as you can see over here, uh, our CM bro basically did 331 relic runs with 29 of the runs giving him 3 gold. So this averages to a rough probability of 8.76%, right, based on 331 runs. Like I said, this is not a very, very strict number because this is ultimately based on only 331 runs. So the sample size is definitely not as large as they would like it to be. Uh, but this is done by a single individual player, right, for the probability of 3 gold relics. Right, so on average, 1 gold relic costs roughly 19.16 true base of power and roughly 1 relic run will give him 2.0876 gold relics, right? After accounting for all the runs with three gold relics. So what does this tell players, right? Should we wait for Trailblazer level 65 to farm relics? Uh, or should we farm them earlier? Since the odds for gold relic is like so small anyways, right? it's like less than 10%, right? So despite the extremely low odds of getting three gold relics, the main benefit of waiting to farm relics in Trailblazer level 65, it is not really for the three gold relics. It is more so due to the additional relic experience gained from more purple relics. So as you can see over here, uh, at Trailblazer level 65, you do get two gold and five purple, right? This, occasionally this gives you three gold, uh, but five purple is pretty much guaranteed. So this one run for 40 stamina is 8,000 relic experience. Whereas compared to this, at Trailblazer level 60 to 64, you get 2 gold, 3 purple, and roughly 1.5 blue, right? So this is out of all the runs that players have submitted. And this gives you roughly 6,750 experience, which is around 1,250 relic experience lesser per run. So for the whales, or for players who have been trying to upgrade their gear, you guys will know how valuable these relic experiences are, especially if you're somebody that are not doing their 34 runs of Zenimated Universe every single week, right? Relic experience is definitely a very, very rare commodity especially if you're going to be taking your gears to level plus 15, right? So because of this, it is still recommended to go way more in-depth with direct farming only at Shrew Blazer level 65, just so that you're guaranteed to get more relic experience. The additional one gold relic is uh, it's kind of, it's like a consolation prize, right? The main prize is still ultimately getting more experience per relic runs. So this is why players will generally reserve most of their relic farming time uh, only after Shrew Blazer level 65. Now, with regards to relic main stats, it is the record of 13,116 relics as of 21st of July, 2023, right? So out of 13,000 relics, these are the probabilities that are provided to us. Let me just hide my camera real quick so that you guys can see this more clearly. All right, so as you guys can see over here, for I've taken the liberty of translating everything and highlighted the cells in which the gear for the main stat is the lowest drop rate. Right? So you can see over here, for chest, 
outgoing healing chest actually has a lower drop rate than crit chance and crit damage. Surprisingly, surprisingly, right? Uh, so, like, to nobody's surprise, HP, attack, and defense, that the majority, right? Most of you guys will probably has a lot, a lot of these uh, mains that for the chest, uh, but it's really, really rare to get crit chance, crit damage, and now even healing. So this is that for chest. For boots, speed boots actually only has a 12.15% drop rate for the mains that as compared to HP, attack, and defense, right? So this is going to say, for you guys who are trying to farm for speed boots, the odds are already against you since the start of the game, right? They are not in the equal 1 to 4 chance, right? Getting speed boots is way harder than getting any of the HP, attack, or defense percentage boots. Uh, as for sphere, attack, HP, defense, they have roughly 12%, 11% around there. And for element, it's 63%, but this is across 7 elements, right? So you gotta divide this by 7, so each element sphere is roughly at 9% per element. It is not a very big disparity, right? It's roughly just 2% lower. As compared to boots, it is essentially less than half of the probability of HP attack and defense, right? So that's that for sphere. Moving on to rope, as you can see here, ER rope. At a mere 5.68% drop chance for ER rope as compared to HP attack and defense, which roughly has around 27% drop rate, right? Even break effect rope has a 15% drop rate. This is why at the start of the game, I've recommended a lot of players to just spend their resins on ER rope, right? Because ER rope is the hardest main stat to drop across every single piece of gear. Across chairs, across boots, across sphere, everything, ER rope is the rarest main stat. And of course, finally, for heads and hands, it's 100% flat HP and flat attack, so there's nothing much to talk about that. So what do we get out of this um, summary, right? We can get that for players trying to fund for the specific crit chance, crit damage, and speed boots, all this kind of stuff, you can see that the odds really are not in your favor since the start of the game, right? It is not like a 1 in 7 chance of getting HP attack, defense, crit chance, crit damage, healing, and EHR, or it is not a 1 in 4 chance of getting HP attack, defense, and speed. Uh, every single one of these odds are essentially against your favor, especially when you're trying to build for the main stat that you want, right? Healing, crit chance, crit damage, ER. The only exception is sphere. Sphere is more or less consistent, right? It's only between 9% per element versus 11%. So the disparity is not that big. But for every single other piece of gear, that gear with the right main set that you want, honestly, it's a lot harder than you think it is, right? So for players with a very nice speed boots with crit damage, all that kind of stuff, consider yourselves extremely, extremely lucky. So that is that for Reddit main sets. But if you thought that only main stats have different odds against you, then you're in for a very, very rude awakening, as you guys can see from the sub stats section over here. Alright, so as you can see over here, this is the aggregated substats across 10,197 relics as of 15th July 2023. Right? You can see over here, speed, crit chance, and crit damage has a lower chance of obtaining these substats as compared to the other substats, right? HP, attack, defense, uh, flat HP, uh, EHR effect, res, break effect, all these have more probability of landing as compared to speed, crit chance, crit damage, especially so for speed subs, right? Speed subs is the hardest subset to get, and this is across every single piece of gear, right? Across your helmet, your hands, your chest, your boots, your sphere and rope. So this is the aggregated average for every single subset, right? But wait, here's an even more in-depth analysis, which I have taken the liberty of translating. So you guys can see over here, in my spreadsheet, I've taken the liberty of basically translating every single substat across every single piece of main stat. And now we're gonna go into this a little bit more in depth, right? So like I said, oh, this is basically the summarized version just now, uh, which is I show you guys in a slide. But here is the more detailed uh, breakdown for each of the main stat, right? So for this, this is healing chest. For healing chest, the chance of you getting speed subs on a healing chest is at 4.42%. Now the cells highlighted in red are basically the lowest, and the cells highlighted in green are basically the substance that you want to obtain for the specific main stat. I think to no player's surprise, healing chests you generally want as much speed as possible since your healers want them to be fast, and if you rest on top of the new newly released broken kill, it's gonna be a very, very nice substat. So these are the two substats that you want to have for healing chests, and as you can see over here, speed is really, really difficult for obtain for healing chests, right? Now let's move on to the next one, which is is the big boy DPS crit chance slash crit damage hatch, right? Now, what are the odds for the subsets in these category? You can see that for HP, attack defense, as well as the defense percentage, um, they're all roughly the same at around 10%, uh, not much of a difference over here. But for speed, 
crit chance and crit damage, they are extremely low, right? They are less than half of the probability of getting a HP percentage or attack percentage, right? So for speed, it is the second lowest at 4.21%. Crit chance and crit damage are even lower, right? Barely 4%, right? 3.12 for crit chance and 3.88 for crit damage. And of course, if you have a crit damage main chest, then obviously you cannot get a crit damage substat, right? So this is for if you have a crit damage chest, the odds of you getting a crit chance on your crit damage main chest is 3.12%. So one could say building a crit damage main stat for the chest with a crit chance substat is even harder than a crit chance main stat building a crit damage substat. So I hope this goes to show you guys actually building crit damage main is one of the hardest gears to build because the chance of you getting crit chance on the crit damage main is literally 3.12%. Extremely, extremely low, right? All right, so that's that for crit chance slash crit damage. And let, now let's move on to the hit and hands, right? For hit and hands, your main stats are basically fixed. So there's nothing much to talk about and you wouldn't be able to get any flat HP for your hit because your hit is basically flat HP, right? And you wouldn't be able to get any flat attack for your hands, right? So this is the alternative. Now, even despite this, the probability of getting speed, crit chance, and crit damage, they're extremely low, right? For in this case, speed is the lowest at 4.68%, crit chance at 7.27, and crit damage at 6.93, right? So I like to say that the difference here, as long as they are within 1% of each other, I would just say they are just a rounding error because the sample size is not extremely, extremely big, right? It's just 3,000 sample size out of everything over here. Maybe if this sample size grows up 10 times, we'll see a closer gap. So I would just say, generally speaking, crit chance and crit damage, they are roughly at 7%, right? With speed being the lowest possible subset for you to get on your head and head, right? Now let's move on to the main stats, right? So this accounts for your chest, your boots, your ropes, and your sphere. As long as any of these pieces get a HP slash attack slash defense means that um, this will be the probability for their subsets. And once again, speed is the hardest subset to obtain, followed by your crit damage and followed by your crit chance. So at this point, I hope that my viewers can start to pick up on the pattern, right? Trying to get that speed, crit chance, and crit damage subset is honestly really, really difficult. And the odds are definitely not equal. Right? Every single different subset has a different weightage, with the odds being against your favor if you're trying to build for a crit chance slash crit damage slash speed, right? So this is for all four pieces of gear with HP, attack, and defense means that. Now for EHR chest, you really just want to care about your speed since they are a debuffer and the only thing you really want to care about is the speed. You could also get some HP and defense for you to survive, but their substats probability is pretty high, so I didn't bother highlighting them. So once again, for speed, it is the lowest probability on an EHR chest, right? At 5.29%, crit chance at 6.61, and crit damage at 7.11. Now let's move on to speed boots. As you can see over here, a uh, crit chance and crit damage of once again are at the bottom of the barrel, right? And the crit chance at 5.71% and crit damage at 6.94%. So on top of the fact, if you guys remember, speed boots has the least probability of appearing in terms of main stat. So if you want a speed boots with crit chance and crit damage, you're essentially gambling for very, very, very difficult odds, right? To get the right main stat with the right subsets. So for somebody that has a speed boots with every single roll rolled into crit chance and crit damage, you are an extremely, extremely lucky individual. So yeah, that is that. Now moving on to Break Effect Rope. Uh, this is kind of niche because the only one that really uses this so far is Break Effect Steel Wolf. We don't really have a lot of very high Break Effect uh, units. But once again, for Break Effect, the only stat you probably want is just Speed. And once again, Speed, to nobody's surprise by this point of time, is the lowest substat, right? At 4.05% out of everything else, right? Now moving on to Sphere. Sphere, assuming that you're in the right elements, for example, if you are going for a blade, blade, you want wind element. If you're going for Sile, you want quantum element, right? So assuming that you're on the right element, the chances of speed, crit damage, and crit chance once again show the lowest odds as compared to every single other substat, right? Uh, and for the last one, energy regeneration rope, CM Rose actually didn't calculate it because the sample size for ER rope is so small that it is not going to make a meaningful comparison, right? So they just found it no point to try to find the, the probability for ER rope because the odds of you even obtaining ER rope is just so ridiculously small at 163 ER rope out of 13,000 relics, you get 163 ER rope. So that's why the subsets for ER rope is basically not established over here. But for every single one of these subsets, you guys can just take a look at your own time. I'll be leaving the link to the Google documents uh, in my Discord as usual, right? So you guys can always take a look at your own time. One last thing I want to talk about before we finally move on from the relic subsets is that each relic subset actually has a different quality of rows tied to each row, right? 
So if you guys have seen Prywin, Prywin basically has just this on their website as well. You can effectively get a low roll, mid roll, or a high roll on each relic substat, right? So the numbers are accurate. And as you guys can see over here, I took the liberty of translating this to the maximum possible roll. Um, let's take for example crit chance, right? If you roll five rolls into crit chance, assuming that you even get five rolls on a crit chance, which which by itself is already an extraordinary feat, you get 12.96% crit chance if all five of them are low rows. As compared to somebody who got all five of them high rows, you now get 16.2% crit chance, right? Well, so what I'm trying to show you guys over here is that the difference between a five high row and a five low row, it is roughly one extra row itself, right? So somebody that has gotten five high rows basically have a six effective subsets row into the specific subset, which is insane, right? Which is an insane, insane quality gear improvement as compared to somebody who has gotten only five rows instead. So this is why at the end of the day, in Conquest Star Real, players really shouldn't be that focused on like how good they want their relics to be because the odds of you getting that god piece with the perfect sub stats, perfect main stats with all the subsets going into the high rows, right? It is so ridiculously small that you might as well just pretend it doesn't exist, right? So my bottom line to all my viewers is that everybody should just keep calm and keep farming relics. Try not to get too upset when you don't get the main stat that you want, when you don't get the subset that you want, or when your rolls don't go into the right subset that you want, right? Bruh. Oh my god, what is going on? You're like, actually, what is going on? Like, what is going on? Because the odds of you getting that specific gear is already against you since the start of the game, right? So just slowly farm, have no expectations, and eventually one day you will be able to get the gear that you have dreamed of since the start of the game, right? So yeah, that's all I have for today's content. I basically just wanted to show you guys how ridiculously hard it is to get a very, very good game from guys started, right? So to all my players, to all my viewers, to all my villagers, keep calm and keep farming relics, right? So that's all I have for today, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.